Uh, yeah, good day. Um, the material for this uh, video uh, was sent to me by by a Christian. In the last few days, even after we published the other video about uh, uh, Dr. Adeboye uh, talking about his so-called words of prophecy, uh, which, of course, uh, according to the Bible, are basically uh, divination, which we published a few days ago. Uh, today is, um, I think today is Thursday or so, uh, I don't know, maybe December, December, December 15, 2022. And uh, apparently this uh, particular Christian, when he saw the video that we, that we published, uh, was more alarmed by the content of this, of today's video, and he sent the clip to me. Um, my prayer is that this this work, God by His mercy, we we use the work, uh, maybe to wake one person up. Let me tell you something: why we must never get tired, uh, even if it means repeating the same thing. We are not going to repeat the same thing, but even if we have to, uh, the 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 the, the Eternity. Eternity is a, is a very long time. And as Paul put it, we are afraid. We fear the anger of God. And because of that, we warn people. In, uh, in sounding the alarm bells, we cannot be tired. In alerting people uh, to the dangers that they are in. We cannot be tired. We we'll have to continue to do it. If I go far, let me tell you one, a few things straight away. Uh, if you are based in Nigeria or you are connected in any way with uh, the people that they call Christians in Nigeria, Either by attending a church, by attending a ministry or whatever, whatever the name of the church, whether it is the Anglican, whether it is the, whether it is the Methodist, whether it is the CAC, whether it is the Baptist, whether it is Equa. If your pastors are not warning you, if your pastors are not warning you about the teachings of uh, mm. the Redeemed Christian Church of God and Dr. Adeboye, if your pastors are not warning you about the teachings of uh, of David Oedepo, if your pastors are not warning you about the teachings of um, of William Kumuyi, if your pastors don't warn you about the teachings of um, Chris Oyakilome, about the teachings of uh, Ayo Orisa Jeffo, let me tell you straight away who they work for. They, the, your pastor works for Satan. I'm looking straight into the camera. I'm saying it. If you are connected to anybody who calls himself a pastor in Nigeria and your pastor does not warn you and he has not been warning you to beware of the dangerous teachings of Enoch Adeboye, your pastor works for the devil. The only reason why your pastor is silent is they are only true. And both of them, both of them, they lead to the same place. Is it that he's ignorant? That's the first thing. Is it that your pastor is terribly ignorant about the content of the Bible? Or is in connivance with the devil straight away? That is actually the situation with many of the pastors of the Baptist churches in Nigeria. If you check their Twitter handles, if you check their Twitter handle, for example, if you check the Twitter handle of, uh, of Yahweh Baptist Church, you see them promoting Redeemed Christian Church of God. If you check the Twitter handle of um, New Estate Baptist Church 
in Lagos. These are some of the big Baptist churches in Lagos that you would think that if you, get, if you go there, you are going to hear the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you check their Twitter handles, you see them recommending the Redeemed Christian Church of God and Enokadeboye to their members. If you go to many of the Equa churches in Nigeria, in the north, even in the south, you do not see the difference between what they preach. What they used to preach before in the 80s and 70s is very different from what they preach today. Today, they do not see any difference between their belief, their faith, and that of Enokadeboye. So, let me repeat what I just said earlier. If you attend any church, any ministry, if you associate with any pastor in Nigeria, and the pastor does not ring your ear, turn your ear violently, that you should open your eyes and see and see what Enokadibo is teaching. Open your ears and hear the words coming out of his mouth. And check those things with what is inside the Bible. Your pastor works for the devil. It's as simple as that. And, the, and your, the, my videos are made for you. My videos are made. I am the one standing at the edge of a cliff with a bear in my hand, warning you, watch it, watch out. The people that you call men of God in Nigeria are men of Satan. That is what they are. If anybody sees today's uh, video, and many of them, they have been seeing things, they have been hearing things taught by Enoch Adeboye, but they have been charmed by the, by the material sources, by the, by the financial sources. They, 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 they are, so that will tell you that your pastors are more likely than not is a, is, a, is a money worshiper. They have been charmed by the material sources of Dr. Adeboye. They have been charmed by the amount of the number of crowd following him. And they actually, they, they want to be like that. That's the person they want to be like. So whatever comes out of his mouth is of no consequence. As far as they are concerned, it's of no consequence. They are using the logic of the devil. One of the logic of the devil is this. If it works, then it is good. That's one of the logic of the devil. If it works, if it is successful, and we are talking of we are talking of earthly success. If somebody is rich, if it's powerful, then it's from God. You only need to think just a little to know that that logic belongs to the devil. That logic is opposite the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the gate is very narrow. The gate is very narrow. The way is very straight that leads to life. Few, few be that find that way. The gate to death, to damnation, is very wide. The road is very broad that leads to death. And many go in their hearts so they don't want to hear anything like that. They want to, they want to ride jets. Your pastors want to ride jets. That is why they are not talking to you. That's why they are not warning you about a no court person calling himself a geo. Calling himself that a geo. I'm addressing this to those of you that go to church. Those that do not go to church is the same thing. Is the same. The devil is interested in deceiving everyone. Those of us going to church and those of you don't go, do, do, do not going to any church, the devil is interested in deceiving every one of us so that we do not see the truth. So that we do not see what is written inside the Bible. 
Whereas he knows that what is inside the Bible is what God is going to use in judging us. Um, I, I wouldn't want to talk too much on this today. We will get to some depth in these short clips from Dr. Adeboye. Let's listen to it. Please pay attention for, your, for the sake of your own soul. For the sake of your own soul, pay attention. Because what I'm saying, whether it is one person that watches it, whether it is one million that watches it, if you are on earth in 2022, 2023, and you are in position to hear the warning from the mouth of this Tamara, and you dismiss my warnings without going on your knees, with your Bible open to check, to ask the Lord to have mercy on you. Your blood is on your head. It's as simple as that. The God of the universe is a respecter of nobody. He does not respect anybody. He does not. And that includes you. That includes me. That's why I must do my own duty in ringing the alarm bell. If you love yourself, you do your own duty in picking up your Bible. Picking up your Bible, closing your door against every human being, including particularly those people calling themselves pastors. Picking up your Bible, closing the door of your room, opening your Bible fast by fast, checking Checking the materials I am making available to you to see whether those materials, whether they are from God's words or whether I am making them up. So let's listen to Dr. Adiboye. Let's listen to him. We will check the Bible again. The Lord had asked me, Allah wants to suffer me to remove my jacket. To lift it up to him. While you are watching. Yes, I hope you heard what uh, Dr. Ariba just said. The Lord had asked me. Um, as, as, as I taught uh, and as the Bible teaches. Uh, the Lord that asked me is the is the introduction to the teaching that the Bible is not enough. Those uh, one, two, three, four, those five words, that's what they mean. The Lord had asked me were you there when the Lord was asking in Okadeboye? to do anything. Do you have a copy? Do you have a copy in your Bible of God asking Enoch Adeboye to remove his jacket or to do anything whatsoever, anything? As I let you know the other time, the meaning of that is that the Bible is not complete. The Bible is not enough. The people in Redeem, they've accepted that teaching. Anybody who goes to Redeem, anybody who goes to, to Winner's Chapel, anybody who follows Christ Kilomen, anybody who is in the so-called Pentecostal, charismatic, word of faith, New Apostolic Reformi Reformation uh, churches, has accepted that the Bible is not enough that God still comes in some surreptitious way. God comes surreptitiously. When every other person is sleeping, he comes surreptitiously to give them new words, new revelation. The words inside the Bible, they are out of date. They are not enough. The Bible is not complete. God is still making himself known in some special way. 
to Inokadeboye. And what he has built his life on is simply to ask you to follow him. To follow him with the visions and words he is receiving from unknown spirits. Unknown spirits calling itself the Lord. Please get it very clear. Get it very, very clear. Get it very, very clear. What, the, what Dr. Ariwa just said is that a spirit came to him. The spirit decide, describes himself as the Lord. That's the, that's the way the spirit calls, calls itself. That he is the Lord. And the spirit, because the spirit has seen that Dr. Adeboye has been deceived. The spirit now proceeds to tell him new things, totally outside of what you have in the Bible. And the only assignment the spirit has given Dr. Adeboye, which he has spent his life executing, is to convince as many people as possible that that spirit is actually of a truth, God. That is the only assignment the Spirit has given to Dr. Adeboye. Please, let us start to be truthful to ourselves. That is why I said all I said at the beginning. If you meet anybody who calls himself a man of God and the person is not warning you, what is going to happen to you the, the moment you close your eyes in death, the person is sent by Satan to pull wool over your face so that you will not see clearly. The God of heaven has made rules. He has given his word. And he has put a, 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 a big full stop, period, at the end of the word. But people like Enochadeboye, have arisen in the last 50 years saying that they are hearing from a so-called Lord new set of things. You see, what God has done to, to make himself great is that he has given us the Bible. And in the, in the Bible, there are, there are words, clear words, clear statements that you are only deceiving yourself if you do not take note of those statements. The Lord has asked me, according to Adeboye, to remove his jacket. So that his Lord is going to tell us what his Lord told him. He's going to, he, has, he, has, he has succeeded. He has succeeded in deceiving millions of people to think that that Lord is the God of the Bible. The little work that me here have to do, that I have to do, is to tell you there's, something, there's a book called the Bible. Let us open it together and see what the writer of the Bible has written. So that we compare what the writer of the Bible has written with what this Lord As told Dr. Adeboye. And I'm to pray for certain minutes. And then drop it. Ask me to tell you that as I drop it, you will cry, Jesus. Seven times. The Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in his uh, final revelation, in um, the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 22, verse 18 to verse 19, and I read it again. I read that passage again. It, 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 revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to verse 19. Is the, is the last injunction, the last command in the Bible. 
it is the full stop of the revelation of the Bible. And uh, as you can see on your screen, because I'm going to, to continue to depict it, I know a lot of people don't fear God. They don't fear God. By when, when, they, when they hear me quote these passages and they say, no, but he quotes only a few, a few passages. That tells you this is we don't fear God. If what we if what I quote is only one one verse of the Bible, and I quote that verse correctly, in context, and that is all the verse I quote for for a thousand years, you are doing horror to yourself by disregarding it. By saying he quotes only one verse. Because except you can prove that that verse is not God's word. If you prove that that verse is the word of God, your blood is on you. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to verse 19, For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, do you see that? If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. That is, God. That, that is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. The last injunction in the Bible, if you should add to it, if anybody should say the Lord had asked me to remove my, my shirt, and do anything with my shirt in form of theology. The owner of the faith, the God of the universe, in verse 18 said, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. The, pla the, pla the plagues that are written in the Bible. That is, that is, that is God's judgment on the Nokadebo. He's still alive. He's still alive. If he likes his soul, he will flee from evil that he had been inducted into from the very early 1970s. When he was shopping for shaman, when he was shopping for shaman for the healing of his daughter, who eventually died, the occult group he had been he had been inducted into. This is God's word to him and his group. If if you should add into to what is in the Bible, do you get what I'm saying? Those words are not mine. Revelation 22, verse 18, was not written by me. So you can disregard it at your confidence. Adeboye is disregarding it. And is, is pulling, like a good servant of Satan, he's pulling millions of people along with him to say that God is speaking to him. The God that wrote what you are seeing on your screen. That God is coming to speak something else to him. He's coming to add to what has already been written to him. And he's asking you like a sheep for slaughter. He's, ask, he's asking you to follow him. Your pastors are asking you to go along to redeem camp, to listen to him. They are not warning you that the God of the Bible is putting curses, has put curses on anyone that has to the Bible. Paul, in the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse, verse 7 to verse 9, says something that your pastors are not telling you. It's better you open your own Bible, these places that I'm quoting, and see the curses that are there, written by God, that God caused to be written in the Bible, that if anybody should bring another gospel, anything to you, 
Even if the person is an angel, he must be cursed. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7 to 9, repeat causes. Repeat causes that go with anybody who says, the Lord had asked me to remove my jacket, to remove my shoe, to remove my singlet, to introduce water to you and to use any other physical object. Let's move forward, please. Then you pick whatever you have dropped on the ground. And please, for God's sake, don't joke with what you are about to pick from the ground. It will be saturated with anointing. Don't give it out. You can use it on people. But don't give it out. Don't let it leave your hand. Here the description of what uh, Dr. Adeboye said the physical materials was going to, to be did you hear what he said? Is it, still, is it still possible you are you are yet unconvinced that what Dr. Adewehe does uh, is pure idolatry? Is it, can anybody can anybody not only in Africa, any part of the world? Tell himself that he does not know that what Dr. Adewe has just described is called charm, amulet. Is it possible you don't know that? You see, the people who follow him, they have convinced themselves that they are not hearing his words. They've allowed themselves to be deceived. The people who follow Oedepo, they've allowed themselves to be deceived. That words don't have any meaning. They do not have any meaning. From the little you heard, it's not clear to you that what you are having is the popularization of idolatry in the guise of Christianity. Christianity that our fathers they knew as faith. They call it Igbagbo. People have arisen like Dr. Adeboye that have gone back to the occult. They have never left the occult. Dr. Adeboye has never left the occult. He has been he has been a consumer of occultism. He has been a, a patron. He has been a patron of occultism from his from his youth. He has been somebody. He had been visiting um, shamans. Doctor, he might he might he might not tell you that in his history. He had been a visitor of shamans all along, all along. So some of the things that he learned. In Kofuns, he is bringing them out one by one. And simply, he thinks that he can wrap the name of Jesus around those things and call it Christianity. The issue is whether you yourself, whether you permit yourself to be deceived. That, that is actually the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is asking you to put some things on your feet, some clothing materials. And he is raising up his own jacket. And he's telling you his deception. He's deceived. 
I'm telling you the deception that by he dropping his jacket, your own clothing material will not be anointed. And you yourself, you you follow you flow you you flow with that. You go you go along with that. Let's listen more to him. Now, please, whatever you want anointed. Put it at your feet now. You see, And then stand. But what did they do? This is an handkerchief. Put it at your feet. This is If it's a shirt. If it's your headgear, it must be a piece of cloth. Yeah, for today's uh, for today's so-called uh, service, it sure must be a piece of cloth. It must be a piece of cloth. Um, I have for you uh, Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 15, where God uh, was giving causes and blessing. In the, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 14 to 15, at the beginning of the causes, that is what you mm -hmm. have on your screen. And God said, And the Levites shall speak, and shall say unto all the men of Israel, with a loud voice, with a loud voice. That is, what, that is why I'm shouting. It must be said with a loud voice. This course must be said with a loud voice, so that every ear hears. Every ear hears. With a loud voice. Cause be the man that makes any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord. The work of the hands of the craftsman and puts it in a secret place. That's from the Bible that Dr. Adewe does not want you to see. God said that the Levite shall speak out unto the men of Israel with a loud voice, with a bold face. They must speak it loudly. That cause be whoever makes any idol of anything, anything whatsoever, and puts the idol in a secret place. Enokadebo is asking millions of people to make idols of clothing materials and put them in secret places. And therefore, they must be told very loudly that both him and them are caused by whoever wrote the Bible, whom they do not regard, whom they do not respect. And you see what the Bible said? That all the men shall say, that all of them shall say amen. If you think I have a choice, Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 14 and verse 15 should make it very clear to you that I have got no choice than to tell you exactly what God says. For anybody who is turning aside into idolatry by any means whatsoever, God said that we should say it with a loud voice that cost be every one of them. Everyone. Everyone. Okay. I, I hope I hope I've made myself clear. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty seven has made himself clear. Uh, of uh, of how we are to proceed to do the idolatry. Uh, the, the only thing is that the, the God of the Bible, the God of the universe, has actually even made himself far clearer. 
and uh, and he has caused to be written in various parts of the Bible. His his hatred for any and every form of idolatry. He has made himself very clear. At times when I listen to to, to redeem people, to redeem itself, to Dr. Adeboye, I ask myself whether the, whether the people that go there, whether it is possible that they do not have Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 7 in their Bible. It's, it's one of the, uh, the, the earlier passages of the Bible against a, against a blatant idolatry. In fact, it's the first part of the Ten Commandments, verse 2 to verse 7 of Exodus chapter 20. I wonder whether, whether the people that, uh, that follow in Okadeboye, whether they do not have Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 7 in their Bible. Verse 7 says, You must not call the name of the Lord your God in vain. For God will not regard the person as guiltless who calls his name in vain. From verse 2, I have something here. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. The fact that you must not have anything of reference, you must not revere anything apart from the unseen God of the universe, anything whatsoever, is a basic teaching in, in Christianity. Is Christianity 101? The fact that the fact that I must not I must not see this and say there's something referential in this. There's something referential in my shirt. There's something referential even in the in the physical Bible, in the in the in the physical Bible. It's basic to the faith of Christianity. But Dr. Adewe does not regard that. And people following him, they've allowed themselves to be blinded, thinking that they can generate words from so-called Lord. And that Lord, you, you should know that the Lord that speaks to Dr. Adeboye, his daddy, generally tells him things that are against what is written inside the Bible. Things that, 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 against, that are against what are what the things that are written in the Bible. That is what that is what his Lord tells him. That is what his daddy tells him. If you do not get that whoever that, that daddy is is opposed to the author of the Bible, you have a problem. Something is wrong with you. And that is one of the reasons why. Sincerely speaking, when I check up what they teach in the various Baptist churches, in the various Equa churches, in the various Methodist churches, in the Anglican churches, and I see that they are all beholding to Enoch Adeboye, they are beholding to David Oedepo. Yes, I can tell you that I know who they serve. Those pastors serve only one master, and that's the devil. Because the word of God is actually the issue, which they do not want you to know. In true Christianity, there must be no item that you revere, no matter what that item is. The moment you revere any item, that item has become a god to you. It has become an idol. 
So what Dr. Adeboye, what he has popularized is that he has popularized idolatry under the disguise of Christianity. That is the sad, there is nothing sadder than that that can happen to people. God had been blanked out from the minds of people. The Lord Jesus Christ had been blanked out from the minds of people. And Dr. Adeboye has now openly substituted various things. This, ta this time around, it is his jacket. Let's give him some other time. I'll give you Bible passages to tell you who, doc who Enoch Adeboye actually serves. You can keep on saying amen while I pray. Uh, the Christian Bible in the First Corinthians chapter 14 um, verse 16 says that you must not say amen to people praying unless you understand what they, what they are praying. If you don't understand anybody praying, if anybody is uh, making incantations around you or speaking any language that you do not understand, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 16 says you do not say amen to such. So, Dr. Adebo is saying you should say amen to his prayers as he prays. You, you are going to hear him do the prayers. I'm only giving you the, this passage of the Bible to put it in your mind. This is what the author of the Bible wrote. That you do not say amen to anybody praying around you except you understand what the person is saying in his prayer. The Bible is very, God is very good. He's very good. He's, he has set rules in virtually every part of the Bible to make sure that nobody is deceived. I said the person is willing to be deceived. So, the Nokadebuye will soon start praying with gibberish, monkey language, baboon language. The man will, st will, will start sp speaking baboon language and is asking people to say amen to it, to those so-called prayers. The, 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 uh, virtually everything that comes out of the mouth of Enoch Adeboye is from the devil. Because virtually every one of them is against what is inside the Bible. Let's listen a little more to him. This is a very important juncture in this uh, video. And I please want you to, to take it a little more seriously. Dr. Adeboye is asking people to focus on the piece of cloth that he was uh, stretching, raising up. Um, actually, Christianity is based on focus. Christianity is based on focus. That is one word that you must not use wrongly. You cannot use it wrongly if you are a child of God. Many passages of the Bible. Let, let, let me see if I can uh, if I can basically go into the Bible straight away. Um, I, I would I would like to talk on on John chapter John chapter three fourteen to fourteen to eighteen. I would like to talk on Isaiah 45, verse 22. I would like to talk on uh, John, John 6, John 6, uh, uh, 40. I would like to talk on Hebrews, Hebrews 12, verse 2. And focus on this piece of cloth now. Okay. The doctor said that you, the people should focus on his uh, on his jacket, and uh, and I was telling you that uh, that we we are actually at a juncture where 
a very delicate juncture really in this particular video and in, in looking at Dr. Adebo's teaching uh, because uh, what uh, everything he, he's been teaching is idolatry but the idea that you should focus on his jacket goes deeper in, in occultism, in idolatry. Focusing on his jacket, focus on the jacket that he was uh, that he was racing up. The idea goes so deep that I have to bring some Bible passages to let you know how deep it is. Um, maybe I should actually start from from Isaiah, from Isaiah chapter forty. I think it's forty-five. Yes. Isaiah chapter 45 uh, in the Old Testament, um, verse 22. Isaiah 45, uh, verse 22. Uh, I hope you can see Isaiah 45, verse 22, which which have uh, just darkened. You, you see what is there? You see where God says your focus should be? Can you see how important the idea of focus is? Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. And you can see the person who is talking, for I am God, and there is none else. The Lord God said, Look unto me. And be ye saved. Enokadeboye said, I'm lifting up my jacket, focus on my jacket. When God says, Look unto me, was it that God was visible? Was it that people could actually see him physically? The definition of idolatry is that you present something. This is the definition of idolatry that our people have. And that is that you present anything physical to stand in place of God. So Dr. Adebuye is presenting his jacket this time around and is asking people focus on it. Focus in the Bible, in spirituality, is me, it means have your faith attached to it. That's the meaning of the word focus. Look unto me and be ye saved means put your faith in me. That is what you have in Isaiah 45, verse 22. That is why you should pick your Bible and listen. Read your Bible and listen to what people are saying. Only shamans come up to say, take this amulet. Put your faith in it. A physical thing, whatever it is. Either a clothing material, either a pendant, either, either cowrie shell, either a stick, either a piece of iron, a piece of pottery, a shell, whatever it is. Put your faith in it and it will save you. In Okadeboye is bold enough to say, put your faith, focus on my jacket. And that is where your salvation lies. God in the Bible says, look unto me and be ye saved. Look unto me and be ye saved. And is anybody still having a problem understanding what I'm saying? That what Dr. Adeboye teaches, uh, as you can see on your screen, it is important that I should uh, draw your attention to maybe one, maybe one, maybe two words that you, 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 
you'll be coming across and you have been coming across in this video and uh, they actually the, the, the words are important it's important for you to know what actually they mean because many of the people nowadays um, they have lost uh, uh, contact uh, connection with uh, with with reality uh, people like Dr. Adeboye has uh, has come up and uh, and they have changed the definition of uh, of words and things to the level that uh, when people are deceived, they do not know again that they have been deceived. They don't realize that they have been deceived until until generally it's too late in their lives. That is when they realize uh, Dr. Adeboye is himself deceived and he has deceived them for all of their lives. So, as you can see on your screen, the, the, the word that I will talk briefly about is the word called amulet. Amulet. I know it's not a word that is uh, that is strange to most of you people. The only thing is that uh, you most of you have not given thought to what actually it means. And therefore, if if anybody come if anybody uh, comes in a good tie, good suit, wear, wears good suits, and speaks uh, very fine English. Uh, if if you, if you are told that the person actually has uh, uh, a degree or maybe two maybe three, uh, you generally think that uh, this particular word does not apply to them. So, as you can see on your screen, amulet is defined as an ornament or small piece of jewelry thought to give protection against evil, danger, or disease. It does not have to be jewelry. It, it could be anything. Uh, of course, uh, in this particular video, you, 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 you hear and you have heard Dr. Adeboye describing uh, the, the, the clothing material that he said uh, he was going to, uh, to anoint, he was going to infuse uh, with, uh, with anointing. He was going to infuse with uh, the power of God in such a way that you are to use those particular item, either your head chair, either your your handkerchief or your shirt, or or any item of clothing or whatever. Uh, I want to tell you that is the same thing. He, Mr. Doctor Aribo is is asking you to. Uh, to put on particular dresses uh, as amulet, as talisman, as juju. Please, it's, impo as, it's important as, as an idol. At least you can see you can see the similar words for them. Is is it a lucky charm, charm, talisman, fetish, mascot, totem, idol, juju? It, they, they mean the same thing. Let, let's see if we can go down. Let's see what other definition. What's the true meaning of amulet? What is the true meaning of amulet? Am, such as a, a charm. It's a charm. Such as, such, such as an ornament, often inscribed with a magic incantation or symbol to aid the wearer or protect against seafood, such as disease or witchcraft. That is what uh, Dr. Adeboye is asking you to start to put on. Actually, this is not the first time he's, uh, he's teaching this. This is, not, this is not the first time he's introducing this to people that come that go to redeem Christian Church of God. He, this is a normal, this is, uh, in this particular video, the amulet uh, is coming through his jacket into whatever item of clothing you are ready to to donate for that purpose, which according to him, uh, he he said he is uh, going by by the by the mere fact of his own jacket dropping on the on the floor. Your own uh, shirt or your own headgear or your own handkerchief or whatever it is, 
will now be imbued with with power. Will now be we, we, we will be inscribed with magic incantation. It's the same thing. Now, um, well, this is uh, this, as you can see on your screen. This is this uh, an example which is very similar to what uh, Dr. Adeboye is asking you to to actually put on. And uh, look at uh, this place. What is a spiritual amulet? Also called talisman. It's an object, either natural or man-made. It is any object believed to be endowed with special powers to protect or bring good fortune. That is an amulet. And that is actually what uh, Dr. Adeboye is asking you to start wearing. Under the guise that you are a Christian, under the, under the guise that he is teaching Christianity, he is asking you to put on amulet. He is asking you to put on amulet. As you can see, amulets are carried on the person or kept in the place that is the des desired sphere of influence, which is exactly what Enoch Adeboye is asking people to do. Special objects of reference. Special objects of worship. Spe special objects that, that will bring protection or bring good luck to you. And he's trying to tell you that that is Christianity. It, it, the duty that you have to your own soul is to ask yourself, whether there's any part of the Bible where the Lord Jesus Christ taught anything of this sort, whether there's any part of the Bible where any of the apostles taught anything of this sort, what you have in the book of Acts was that people who became Christian, they sold their amulets, their charms, their talisman, they burnt them, sorry, they burnt their amulets their charms and their talisman and their talismans and that when the, the 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 value was costed it was found to be about 50,000 pieces of silver Dr. Adeboye is asking you to reenact to 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 reenter and people come from the University of Ibadan from University of Ilori, from University of Benin, from University of Lagos, from Lasso, supposedly educated people, they come. Doctors, PhDs, and so on, and they all follow because they have willingly subscribed their minds to be stolen from them. They are pretending they, that they do not know that this is the meaning of amulet. That what they are being asked to start using again, and many of them have been using it because people who have been attending the, um, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, anybody who has attended the Redeemed Christian Church of God for two, three, four, five years and above, who tells you that it's not, it's not a... It's not a user of amulet. The person is deceiving you. The person is deceiving you. They are all idolaters. Everybody in Redeemed Christian Church of God is into idolatry. Everybody in Winner's Chapel is, in, is, in, is into idolatry. Everybody, everybody following Sam Adiemi is into idolatry. Everybody following Chris Oyakilome is, in, is, in, is into idolatry. Um, I do not really need to tell you much about uh, T.B. Joshua. I don't need to tell you before you know that T.B. Joshua was totally a shaman. Was totally a shaman. So, um, I, I hope this, uh, this definition, I hope they will they, I hope they will be of some help to you. Well, here you see, which is what we have mentioned, the synonyms of amulets. We've mentioned them, talisman, charms, uh, phylacteries, emblems, symbols, mascots, fetishes. 
So, Dr. Adebo is asking you to go back into fetishes. And some people, some people are going back into fetishes, and yet they are comforting themselves that they are born again Christians, that they, that, that they are children of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, things can't be sadder than that. It can't be sadder than that. It's totally opposed to the teachings of the Bible. If you go to John chapter 3, verse 14, John chapter 3, verse 14 to, let me see, John 3, uh, verse 14, verse 14, I think to 18 or so. This was Jesus talking. As Moses, look at the, look at the place. Let me put in the place a little. You can see, you can see it includes that popular passage of the Bible. John 3, 16. The discussion is actually from the beginning of the book of John, John, John chapter 3. But in this particular section, Christ was talking about the same thing. Focus. Faith. I said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, as the serpent was lifted up, that people should look and, 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 be, and be delivered. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Do you see what do you see the Bible? That the issue of focus, the focus is, is the same thing, is the issue. Focus and faith. Focus in, in, in the Bible is, is, is actually synonymous with faith. Put your faith in. That is what Dr. Ribo is saying. And that is what the Bible is saying. The issue is the object this time around. What is the object of faith? To Dr. Adeboye, it is, it is his jacket this time around. To the Bible, it is a consistent person. It's, 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 the Bible is very consistent. It is on the person of God himself. It is on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. The focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, this is where... All this palaver is headed in letting you know that Dr. Adepoye is actually employed by the devil for only one purpose. And the purpose is to remove your focus from God. That is the purpose. Nothing more. The only reason why, why the devil has raised up in Okadepoye is to remove your gaze, your focus, your look, your faith from God. Because faith and focus, they are basically the same thing in spirituality. So when Enoch Adeboye stands up and says, focus on my jacket, what he's telling you is that put your faith in this physical thing that I'm holding in my hand. In John chapter 6, verse 40, let's just look at it briefly. Uh, he's saying basically the same thing. John chapter 6, verse 40. He's basically saying the same thing. In, in fact, the Bible is replete. The Bible is filled with this teaching because it's, it's the central teaching of the Bible. The idea of faith and the object of faith. The faith is attached to who? The faith is attached to who? And this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone that sees the sun, everyone that sees the sun, how do you see the sun today? Is the sun physically available? No, the answer is no. Seeing the sun is the same thing as having faith in him. At least you can see what follows. Everyone that sees the sun and believes on him may have everlasting life. What is going to give people everlasting life is what Inoka Deboye is distorting. How they are going to get everlasting life is what Inoka Deboye is 
smearing, is soiling in the mud, is dragging the mud. So when you see, focus on my jacket, and I tell you, this is the central issue. You only need to get to understand what the Bible is talking about. The person who lives is the one that sees Jesus. The one that lives is the one that sees Jesus. The one that looks on Jesus. Look at Jesus on the cross. The only way you look at Jesus is by the eye of faith today. That is not possible if you are actually looking at the jacket of Dr. Adeboye at the same time. In Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews 12, uh, verse 2, you see the same thing. Looking, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The person we are supposed to look at, as far as the Bible is concerned, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. To Dr. Adeboye, his jacket is the object of our focus. It is his jacket that we should look at, not the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as it goes down, you have to pick what you put between your feet and cry Jesus seven times. Yeah, that, that is the that is the process of uh, of the idolatry. Uh, now you should ask yourself from what passage of the Bible did Mr. Adeboye read what he was now doing? His, uh, his uh, jacket held aloft. According to him, as the jacket goes down, the anointing will settle. Anointing, the so, so-called so anointing will settle on the clothing materials that his people have put between their feet. And somebody, people do not realize they are, they are back into full-scale idolatry. The going down of his jacket. because You, you know that the, focus, the jacket was the object of faith. People were, were asked to focus on the jacket. And the touching of the ground of the jacket was actually the the moment the so-called anointing will go into the into the into the sheds, the handkerchiefs, and the head jars that people have put on their feet. It's, it's purely a courtesy. There's another thing that you had in that clip that his uh, his people should call the name of Jesus seven times. Uh, I know many of you have had some of those things, and many of you have participated in such things. Calling on the name of Jesus 10 times, or 40 times, or 70 times, and you, you, you did not know, many of you don't know, that what you are doing is called numerology. That is what it is called, numerology. The occultism of numbers. That is the simple language of it. Calling on the name of Jesus seven times or 70 times or 700 times is, is from the occult. The Lord Jesus Christ is God. God does not do anything by the number of times you call on his name. It, that, it's only, it, that is pure occult teaching. So what Dr. Adewe had just said is occult teaching. And that is why you must check the materials on my website, on my blog, and on this YouTube channel. 
and you check them with your Bible so that you know what is written in the Bible. Except, of course, you can tell me that you know from reading the writings of Paul or of Peter, you know any time any of those people ask you to call the name of Jesus seven times. If you know anywhere, Paul said, call the name of Jesus ten times. Call the name of Jesus twenty times. Call the name of Jesus thirty times. If you know any such place, it is a courtesy. It is not true faith in Christ. It is not true faith in Christ. The idea, the idea was borrowed from witchcraft. The idea was borrowed from witchcraft. It is actually part of the depersonalization of God. It's part, it's part, it's part of the, the teaching on the depersonalization of the person of God. That there are actually formulas that you can utter. There are formulas. Formulas are, are from incantations. They are connected. That is where the teaching comes from. So when you gather in some churches and they ask you to, to say amen three times or say amen seven times or say amen 20 times or call the name of Jesus seven times or 70 times or whatever, it's, 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 it's so called. It's so called. It's so called. They are telling you. It is called numerology. It's, that's, the, that's the part of occultism from where it comes from. Numerology. It's not Christianity. It's not from the Christian faith. Even though they are saying they are using those things in the church today. So you are calling the name of Jesus seven times. No? I mean it means what? Is God an inanimate object? Is God an inanimate being? No, it, it, that tells you again that the people that Dr. Adeboye does not know God, anybody telling you, call the name of Jesus seven times or 70 times or 20 times or say amen three times or four times or whatever, they do not know God. They do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Of course, Fe <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you, you saw what I wrote there. Behold your God. In Akadeboye, he has now brought out their God to them into the open. And it was not dragging so that people will see their God. 
some of them don't know what they are doing. They don't know that is actually what they are what they are saying. They are now today. To the, that particular day was the day for the worship of the green jacket. And as he was doing that, you you hear him shakama koro popo kaka kaka. They are all lies. They are all lies. They are all lies. I'm I'm not talking of an Okadeboye PhD in mathematics. I'm talking about what he is saying about Christianity. Shama popo kaka kaka go go gaga cha shakara put. From where did you get that in the Bible? Which person in the Bible pretended to be praying to God in that language? Which person? From which verse of the Bible can you see that? Those are those are languages from 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 Covens. Those are languages from Covens. For the opting time, I will say it again: the tongues of the Bible are intelligible languages. Intelligible. The person saying it may not understand it. The person, the person hearing it understood clearly that he was talking, he was speaking his native tongue. Yes. So the man going about and doing chara popo ka 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 is a courtesan. Anybody doing Forget about it. Forget about it. If if a million people say that they do it around you, and that is emblem of Christianity, it's very, very simple. All you need to ask them, just show me the passage of the Bible where such languages were used. It's as simple as that. The tongues of the Bible were intelligible languages. Anybody you, saying any other thing, is actually working for the for the devil. It's from the is it's only the devil that 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 wants to, as I said, blindfold people with unintelligible languages. Faith in God is an intelligent thing. True faith in the Lord Jesus Christ it an, is an intelligible thing. It's an intelligible thing. Anybody telling you that there's something hidden about it. Is working for the devil. That's not that's not the tongue of the Bible. These people do not speak the tongue of the Bible. The tongue of the Bible is what I'm talking straight to you about true faith, about saving faith in the Savior. That is the tongue of the Bible. What I'm what I'm saying to you to people who do not speak English, who never went to school, is strange tongue to them. Even to the to my Yoruba people in my village, who did not go to school, what I'm what I'm all this I'm doing with you is as if I'm wasting my time because they they don't understand what I'm saying. They just don't understand. It's as simple as that. That's the tongue of the Bible, intelligible languages, not what you saw from an Okadiboye. I'll make one or two more comments in this particular clip, then I'll close it. Father, I have done what you asked me to do. Baba I hereby decree all those who believe receive the double portion receive the double portion amen receive the double portion amen receive the double portion of the spirit of Jesus uh, Dr. Adebu is asking people to receive the double portion. Of course, you know, you know, he's not praying. When you hear Father, he's not talking to, he's not talking to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking to the to Satan. Satan is the person Dr. Adebu, uh, Dr. Adebu calls Father. Do you, you understand? 
the way you know it is what we've been doing all along. That is uh, by checking the Bible, because the Bible is the only certain source of the words from God. So when people teach something that is, that are different from things that are different from the word in the Bible, you know who they call Father. Now, let me speak briefly on this their so-called doctrine of the double portion. Uh, for people who do not know the Bible, they think that the doctrine is biblical. No, not at all. Not at all. Not after the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not, it does not have anything to do with Christianity, not in the least. This idea of uh, the double portion is part of numerology. It's part of the occult, occultism of numbers. And I will explain why it is like that. You see, what Christians have is the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what makes you a Christian. That is what you have in Romans chapter 8, verse 9. If anybody does not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is not a Christian. If you do not have the spirit of Christ, you are not a Christian. So when Dr. Adebaye comes and, and he says that you should receive the double portion of the spirit of Christ, you, 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 know, you know he does not know what he's talking about. He just thinks that they, they just, they, these people just think that they could just read something anywhere and they just bring them and they are just, uh, they are flying with, uh, with ideas that do not mesh, things that don't go together. So they, they are teaching evil. If you go to the book of John chapter 3, verse 34, what you have in the book of John chapter 3, verse 34, let me see if I can get it. Um, just a minute. If I can get, uh, yes, John chapter 3, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. John chapter 3, verse 34. Um, John, John chapter 3, verse 34. Yeah, let me see if I can record. Just a minute. John chapter 3, verse 34. This is the place I'm highlighting, I'm darkening. Particularly starting from here. That is what the Bible says about the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. For him whom God has sent speaks the word of God. This he in that place is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he speaks the word of God. And you see what you have in the dark? What I have darkened? For God given not the spirit by measure unto him. For the Lord Jesus Christ, that Adeboye is asking you to receive double portion of his spirit. The Bible says that God did not measure his spirit to him. In ignorance, Enogadebo is asking you to receive the double of a measureless gift. A gift that has got no measure. Because that is, that is God himself. So when they talk of double portion, double portion, you don't know the Bible. You think, they, you think these, people, ah, these people are deep. They are deep in Christianity. Not at all. They are deep in occultism. For the Christian, there is no measuring about the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that is in every true Christian. So the idea of doubling it does not even... is nonsense. The idea of doubling it is nonsense. You receive the double of the Spirit of God. Do you have the double of God? But because they are ignorant, they do not know. They do not know that what they are teaching is not from Christianity. 
They read something like a double portion between Elijah and Elisha. And they are flying about with, with that. Instead of listening to the Lord Jesus Christ, that John the Baptist was greater than Elijah, that John the Baptist was greater than Elisha, but that the least, the smallest Christian is greater than John the Baptist. So you, you, I hope, I hope this will be of benefit to somebody. That everything they teach in the redeemed Christian Church of God is inverted, is turned upside down. Because they do not know Christ. If you don't know Christ and you are trying to teach Christianity, you put you 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 I mean you mix things up. You you teach things that are not true. You that is actually so that is what you have in this so-called uh, so when you see double portion, anywhere you see such things, by any of these um, charismatic uh, Word of faith, uh, prosperity, and all those uh, new apostles, these, these people call themselves new apostles, they are all new in occultism. They are new in teaching error. You cannot have double of the Spirit of God. Because the Bible says that God did not give his Spirit to the Lord Jesus Christ by measure. <laughs> 